What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. This is the end. We're going to be doing the uh, final DLC today. Um, we'll see how this works. On a number of different levels, I um, have been sick for the last couple days, so I will try not to cough too much into the camera. But let us get on to the Drake Heap. Also, the other reason is that, you know, this is a this is a tough DLC, so we'll see. And we we are gonna do everything in it, <clears throat> unlike what happened with uh, Dark Souls One. Uh, I did not like finish absolutely everything of that DLC. Well, yeah. So the first thing is that um, we kind of come out here and we kind of see what we saw at the kill of the first flame or whatever. I don't know exactly how it was referred to. Um, all of the. Uh, all of the uh, lands or whatever, the buildings are all kind of caving in towards a certain area. Looks like down there. Um, so we're going to learn about that in this DLC. But first, there's a uh, Pilgrim of Londor here. Oh, your head's square on your shoulders, is it? I thought that clamoring tin can was the last. But here we go again. What is it you want from this old stone-armed hag? I've nothing for you, not a smithereen. I just like to stand here and take in the view. Um, she talked about a tin can. Thought that might have been the last, so someone else has been through here recently. But apparently we it's thinning out and that we may in fact be the last one to trudge this path. I have business with her. Well, that came out of nowhere. You think an old stone armed hag would be brimming with goodies? Possible. <laughs> None of that. Not a smithereen. So yeah, she's a store. Sell some uh, things here, or whatever. But she also has the split leaf great sword, which is a really confusing uh, weapon to me, as it is a halberd. Don't know why it's called a great sword. A long-handled great sword that made its way from a distant land, crafted entirely with steel, making it exceedingly heavy. Split leaf refers to the shape of the great blade, its and its resemblance to veins of a leaf. And of course, it has a spin to win. That's all she sells. That will be of interest. At the close of the Age of Fire, all lands meet at the end of the Earth. Great kingdoms and anemic townships will be one and the same. A great tide of human enterprise, all for naught. That's why I'm so taken by this grand sight. This must be what it's like to be a god. It is interesting that um, this kind of storyline about how there's physically lands coming together certainly addresses things outside of the original Dark Souls. In the original Dark Souls, there was kind of a purpose for the lands to be so close together. Um, like, they were built on top of each other, and they all had their own histories and stuff, and their histories inf in informed their, like, makeup. In other words, you know, chaos became an issue with... Uh, Isolith because of what happened there. So lava, a lava world made sense. And what Engi did made Blight Town made sense. So beyond that, um, 
you know, and there's been a lot of criticism of Dark Souls 2 for its random assortment of lands. It could be that they were coming together, um, and that they, in fact, were much further apart. And, and, sh and that, you know, we were kind of looking at that more specifically in, in 3 here. And obviously now they have the image of, you know, physically things coming together, which is nice to have because it kind of solves any, you know, issues of that. <laughs> um, it, it, like, it, it's very clear what they mean here. Um, so I guess it's kind of wiping away what, like, why the Iron Keep was above the Earth and Peak and stuff like that. I don't know. Oh, if you just can't stop yourself, at least hear this. Far below, there's a deep, dark hole carved out of a tree. From time to time, voices brim from the depths of the cavity even now. Mutterings of the very demon that Prince Lorien spoke of, I'm sure. Horrible sounds of an afflicted thing, yet cursing men. So yeah, we had heard about that. Lorien fighting a demon prince. Um, and apparently it's at the base of a, of a tree. Um, maybe this tree. I don't know. At the closed gate. Keep your marvels intact, love. Um, okay. So this, this level has a mechanic where you can, you know, fall in this ash, uh, without getting hurt. And they show you this by telling you to take the plunge, and then they have uh, uh, Slave Knight Gale pointing where you should be going. The guy who told us to go into the ashes of Ariandel. Um, and you can also see that everywhere that he tells you to go, they put he puts a bit of his scarf. These, these weird things, and they seem to fire human drags. Like they have some sort of abyssness. Or dark or deep or whatever they're wanting to call it. Oh wow. Was not even looking at my health there. And we see a, um, a, a dragon here, and actually you can drop down uh, immediately here, that's like a shortcut I guess. Oh, and there's another guy over here. Um, but yeah, so this is actually where we kind of start off in... Um, in the high wall of Lothric. And then we come over here, and then when we go up here, this is the area. I'll explain in a second. But there's this enemy here, which is made a little bit easier. Oh! He's meant to kind of like fall on his head. But I missed. There you go. And his head looks like a um, humanity somewhat sprite thing. Um, but yeah, this is where we would go up and then this guy attacked us from the side and there was a guy sleeping here and we came up here, and this is where the binoculars were. 
pretty sure. Now it's the aquamarine dagger. A dagger fitted with an aquamarine crystal engraved with a prayer in the old tongue to ward off incident. Perhaps it was a parting gift given this one sent off on great travels. Or you know what this could be actually? This is where we leave um, when we first arrive at the high wall of Lothric, then we come down and then this is where the bonfire is, but this isn't really here. And then this is where you would go down. Yeah, this looks like what this is. There's a guy right over here. And then a screamer comes out of this uh, stairway here. Oh, I've never really put that together. Okay. And then this is inside at this point. And there is a dragon close by, although it's not there. It's here. Anyway, there's a, an event here. I love that event. Oops. See, there's an item in there. Try to be careful not to uh, trigger. Now this looks like the Grand Archives. And there's the big... Uh... The reason I'm not trying to trigger is because these guys can turn into humanity sprites and, r and jump at you. I'm sure we'll see it, but I just avoided it right there. These guys can uh, grab you. Um, when they uh, emerge like that, so you have to get away. But yeah, there was a big chandelier in the Grand Archives. Murky Hand Scythe. A short shafted hand scythe wielded by the Merkmen who rise from the depths, enveloped by a black dampness and imbued with the strength of dark. Yes, it drags dark. I think this is a real clever way, you know, from a developing standpoint of re kind of reusing some old assets in a sense, but by making a whole new thing. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is where, yeah, we come in. I mean, it's a little different, but that's where we come in from the gargoyles. There's a guy sitting in a chair there. There's a bone shard. And then you can dunk your head over here. And Well, maybe it's a different location, but it looks very similar. I'm surprised I did not get a humanity running at me. And now we're going to see another uh, <coughs> sorry, image of Gale, but I'm going to jump through this real quick get a divine blessing and then we have this thing which I'm gonna call an angel it's got wings and every time it sees me, it shoots kind of like divine pillars of light, but vertically. We'll be coming back to that. And then here we can see like for example, here's the uh, guy holding his um, ha head in his hands, except it's been completely, uh, oh gosh, here we go. Didn't want to trigger these guys. Cause this guy is gonna 
I didn't die to that guy, and I don't think I would have died to those Lothric Knights had I, uh... <laughs> like, had he not invaded, but... Uh, we'll be doing this part a couple times, so... Let's just... Wish I would have... I love that image. I hate how they come at you both. Ooh. I also ha hate how they have a combo that lasts 50 moves. You can really stagger this guy with this weapon. swing away and for now we're gonna pop embers but ooh, Lothric Knight leggings I wonder if it's a different Lothric Knight leggings and different description Knight has served as the three pillars now yeah. the only different difference is that these guys are like filled with um, uh, trees somehow tree branches growing over them. There's someone praying to a, a fallen knight. Looks like a herald. Looks like my helmet. That's interesting. Someone from the Way of White. Um, yeah, and so here's something. This is a... Uh, the pus of man, I think, as a as a big snake. Um, you know what? I think I'm just gonna run through this place. I mean, um, and this is where the. Um, this is where the Wingen Knight was was walking around in the beginning of the game, around this thing, and there used to be Sullivan on top of that, as a thing. You'll have to go watch that episode for me to talk about that. But it's now a knight cutting off his own head. They remove Sullivan's image. So we get the murky long staff, and we find this. There's so many of them. I think they keep coming, don't they? Let's just... Okay. okay. So they pull you down into the depths. I didn't realize there was something here. Oh, an ember. Nice. Need that. Alright. So yeah, we're just gonna go and get uh, attacked by... Uh, Let's do this just in case. So there's the humanity sprites. And I think that ends the onslaught. Oh, you gotta kill this guy. There we 
There we go. Oh boy. Except I guess these guys. Good? I think we might be good. So yeah, and this was the uh, Great Soul Dregs. This is where we came in in Lothric from the roof, and then the... well, kind of. It's like everything's a little different. But then the, um... the, like, first Lothric Knight, Spear Knight, came, and we fought him here. A sorcery that fires great soul dregs that have stewed for ages far within the deep. This sorcery is the highest form of deep soul. Some of the merkmen who rise from the depths have, are possessed by soul dregs, which have grave likeness to the human form. So yeah, we were right. They are dreg-like. Okay. Anywhere the ash is, we can fall without damage. And we have the Coveted Silver Serpent Ring, plus three. Um, most of the plus rings in this game are in New Game Plus cycles, but... Alright, well this fell down, and this actually means a new path. But uh, we'll come back to that in a second. But yeah, in the Ring City, they just were like, let's give them all the plus three versions. Um, so yeah, one thing here is this, um, being, um, we'll get a better look at this, but this is actually controlling the, uh, angel up here. So what's kind of interesting about this is that it definitely looks like it has been created on the back of a Londor pilgrim like out of the shell just the chains have broken off and it's kind of grown off of that what is kind of confusing is that there's this and then there's the thing up there which is similar looking for sure but I don't know how they're related like in other words is this is this one about to like become like I don't know how they control each other but if we kill this one then we kill that permanently too and we can see here that this made a hole <coughs> excuse me <laughs> I looked away from the screen and decided to run around that tree. Um, so, let's uh, go up this path now. I can see someone over here. Oh, look at you. You've got your head screwed on, correct? Fantastic. To meet a kindred spirit on this god's forsaken crag. Call me Lap. I, I can't remember my real name, so let's just go with that. I have a feeling we're going to make a fabulous team. Oh, you'll see. You'll see. So, yeah, I mean, if you've been paying attention for any of the games, any of the lore through so far, you'll be able to identify this immediately as patches. Um, he's almost doing his patches squat and it's definitely the same voice actor and he you know says I don't remember what my real name is as if there is one you know like that he is someone else so this is patches as lap at the end of the world uh, at the ring city um, quite interesting um, that he made it here Oh, in all honesty, there's something I should tell you. I'm a hollow. Yes, I try to play it off, but I haven't a clue about my past, who I was, or what I lived for. 
not even my own blessed name. That's why I've come here, searching for the purging monument. Said to be in the ringed city, oh. where the pygmies who found the dark soul at the dawn of fire reside. All I can say is, those little stones aren't doing much to help me remember anymore. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> um, so a couple things there. A, this is a very in interesting interpretation of Hollow. I thought that Lucatiles was the best storyline that highlighted the facets of being Hollow. Um, uh, and Lucatil wasn't as cordial as this. In other words, like, when things started flip, uh, slipping away, there was a lot of anguish and and even like it, it didn't get to the point where she all out attacked us or anything but she was kind of like losing it um and lap here is just very content to be lap and whatever he also said that the stones aren't doing much to help anymore which is i we haven't really explored it in this game but like you see i'm embered and i look hollow right now i don't look human um it's because i you know i hollowed from dying and i and whatever and um, I, I accepted the dark sigils and such like that. I can cure that by a purging stone. Because there is no real curse in this game in the same way. Um, like it doesn't half your health like it did in the first one. <coughs> and he also said, <laughs> I'm trying to go to the purging monument. Obviously, you know, he's been using purging stones. There's a monument somewhere, a purging monument. Uh, at the Ring City, which is what this DLC is called, and um, it's where the pygmies that found the Dark Soul are said to reside. So, I mean, we've only known of the one pygmy, the furtive pygmy. I mean, I suppose the fact that they call them furtive pygmy means that there's like, other types, other pygmies. <laughs> but I always thought furtive was just a description of him as compared to the other people that found Lord Souls in the, in the flame. But now apparently there's a city of pygmies that were founded, you know, from the Dark Soul type thing. Which is interesting. Because of course we know that, you know, dregs, dark, deep, humanity, Dark Soul are all connected. And it looks like we're headed towards that. And um, and this is what's going to solve Lap's issues. Well, that's the long and short of it. So if I completely forget who you are, don't be wroth with me. Come on. What else can I say? I'm a bloody hollow, for heaven's sake. <laughs> well. Okay. <laughs> So yeah. If you don't kill that guy, he becomes a humanity. And comes at you and just completely uh, screws you up here. All right, I'm going to go and do this section right here, um, but I'm not going to fight these guys. I'm going to try and run through this real quick. See why? So you see that thing that he, his weapon that he uses there, it's a little different than the spear. It's what I just picked up. Okay, yeah. Uh, you can see the special. Yeah, he's just coming for me. Okay. So we fall down here at Gale's recommendation. And let's read a couple of that, those things. We got another ember. And we got projected heal. A miracle discovered in the last days of Lothric. 
Toss a light that heals those near the point of impact. Even those who had forgotten the caress and bounty of the Princess of Sunlight did their best to recall her image. The stories spun about her were most certainly childish, and yet gravely sincere. Well, the Princess of Sunlight is likely the Queen of Lothric, so either this is them missing their queen, or them making it in the Princess of Sunlight's image, which was the Queen of Lothric, which made sense to them. And then we have the Lothric War Banner. The flagpole that once carried the Lothric crest and guided the knights long ago. The tip of the pole is fitted with a sharply pointed decoration, letting it serve as a spear. And you can see the Lothric um, crest when you use it. The two dragons or whatever, two eagles maybe? I don't know. We knew that the previous king, quote unquote, insignia was an eagle, so maybe it was two eagles. I'd have to use it. I don't know if I can use it to do that. Yeah, it just doesn't do anything. Okay. No matter. Um, we'll get to this uh, in a second. Here's a. Uh, Dead uh, thrall. Uh, but we're gonna have to go back up here. We're not gonna look or talk about any of this stuff. <coughs> Except to point out that this bonfire is called Earthen Peak Ruins. But we're gonna jump up to the drag heap again. We have a couple things to do here. The first is speak to this old hag. Strange little lad you are. What on earth do you see in me? So inquire of the ring city is here. Let's see if she has anything else to say. Oh, if you just can't stop yourself, at least hear this. Far below, there's a deep, dark, Oh, well, did we just hear this one? Have I already forgotten? From time to time, okay. voices brim from the depths of the cavity, even now. Mutterings of the merry demon that prints horrible sounds. Okay, well, that was a little different, but same content. Alright, let's ask what the Ring City is. Why, where did you hear that name, love? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll tell you what I know. The Ringed City is said to be at world's end. Past this heap of rubbish, as far as one can go. But you'd better think twice. The forsaken Ringed City was walled off by the gods to contain the pygmies. To contain them? And the dark soul is better left well alone. Hmm. You're not willing to reconsider, are you? Well, that's just fine. It's a rare thing to have a true duty. Don't go and take it for granted, I suppose. Won't do any better than this. Not you, or that poor thing can. You're not really well. Okay. Yeah, well. Yeah, we're definitely going to go and um, find the Ring City for sure. If it's at World's End and it's where Lap is going. can see you can see Gale here now you can see where he put his scarf up here there's no more um, angel so we can take our time with this area usually you'd come across here to peek around the corner at the angel and then this guy comes and swallows you up I like that but we will find a ring. Ring of Steel Protection 3.
which we will just replace. <coughs> so yeah, you can see here, two like tigers it looks like actually. Anyway, lap is gone. And we're gonna now take the other path that we didn't take. Alright, so the main goal here is to get this Harold Knight and jump on his head without getting killed ourselves. Not really? Okay, where is he? Oh, there's still more guys here. Um, okay. There we go. Oh, great. Oh, you can kill these guys. That's good. So can I. This guy just takes forever to kill. He's not particularly hard. I mean, it takes a bit to get used to his movements, but it's just like, if you can kill him by falling down on him, I mean, that's the best. Just takes forever. Okay. Thanks for the chunk, and this is where we would have fallen down had we not gone back and investigated the falling tower. We have some more pilgrims here, which is to be ex uh, expected, I suppose, because this is the... looks like it might be... I don't know exactly what it is, but it's, it's in Lothric. And here we have another... Um, Gale pointing down and his scarf. So let's do it. So yeah, now let's let's talk and think about this. So this is this is Earth and Peak. So this is probably it's meant to be. Oh, come on. I'm probably, um, probably put that on here. We're coming up to some poison areas. But this is probably the thing we set a flame, where we might kill again, or at least evoking it. Um, here's Lap, by the way. Oh, I know who you are. <laughs> Great to see you still in one piece. Come, I can see why they call this the Drake Heap at the World's End. Mangled remnants from every age and every land right it actually sort of lends credence to the old rumors that the ringed city rests below it all uh, <laughs> don't mind me you needn't worry yourself with this nonsense i just wanted to tell someone but i'm sick of old humpty i should stay quiet wait i'll make it up to you 
by letting you in on a secret of sorts. Past here, you'll find the remains of a giant earthen tower, half submerged in a poisonous swamp. Mm -hmm. Not a very nice place to visit. Only, there's precious treasure in the thick of the swamp. I didn't have any use for it, you see. So, sorry, I, I left the whole package behind. <coughs> if I get the chance, I, I could go fetch it for you. But if that's too long to wait, go nab it for yourself. I know who oh. you are. A righteous warrior. Yes? With a solemn duty to boot. Well, grab that treasure. That's as good a duty as any. That seems very patches like. Past here. You're not a very nice. If I get. The, I know. Well, grab that. Sounds a little suspicious. Alright, I'm gonna do this next area kinda quick. <clears throat> And we can kind of talk about stuff later. So part of the puzzle of this area is that you're kind of meant to get through this area, you know, trying to figure out what to do with these, uh, trying to do with these angels or whatnot. So, we're gonna just take a little shortcut here that we know about so that we can, or at least hopefully we are. That like takes all of your health, I'm not sure why. But, it really enables us to kind of get through these areas a little bit better, because this is a bit hidden, you can't find it till later in the... Thing. So it's kind of hard to see, but that killed that one, that, that uh, angel. More embers. Welcome. <laughs> I was like, why is there a summon sign? But that's because the area, I mean, in fact, this is just like, this was built for its speedrunners. I mean, you can basically, right there is... This is the the hole. I can hear the sounds emitting from it. But um, you could just uh, go right to that if you wanted to and not do anything else. We, however, are going to do something else. Um, so yeah, I guess we will, uh, we'll just kind of clear out this area here. Unperturbed by the, uh, the angel. Looks like we gotta go down there. There's just so many thralls around here. I'm just like, how did he get the drop on me with that? I was swinging before he fell down. <laughs> All right, desert pyromancer garb. Garb of the desert pyromancers who once walked the halls of earth and peak. It is said that the thin burgundy cloth breaks with mad breathes with magic. Desert pyromancers, most of them female, were known for their great fans of flame and enchanting looks. But what is enchanting can also be deadly, especially when clothed in such alluring garb. Um Where is it? Here we go. Just grab this real quick. Still see laps sitting there. Well, let's investigate what's over this edge here. I wanted there to be some really cool shortcuts where you could like jump down from the beginning and fall right here or something, but it's not really anything like that. 
Okay. Okay. Just simply a path. I'm gonna try to get to the next angel and kill it, and then we can maybe... Call it an episode. This is gonna be a long DLC. Um, giant door shield. This is a very controversial weapon. Or shield. Unusually shaped paired great shields resembling great doors. Heirlooms of the knight, who was known as the protector of the meek, yet who failed to protect anyone. I don't know what that's referring to, but I don't think we got both of Orma and whatever's shields, although I think we got one. But they certainly look like that to me, so I would imagine it's those. Reference to that, because that's Dark Souls 2 as well. Um, Aha, uh -huh, there's Titanite Scale. Alright, so we're just. Okay. We're just gonna rush through all this area. I don't care if we get poisons. Just different. Like attacks, if you. Like, it's better to. Yeah, that one. You can't outrun it forever, is all I'm trying to say. He, like, does different attacks that go ahead of you, so it prevents you from running. <coughs> I feel like I'm. Probably too far away from the mic, which is probably good for the coughing, but not good for the commentary. Especially since I'm not going to be talking super loud, because I'm sick. Alright. Oh, I hate thralls. I did not find this on my first playthrough, by the way. This is very hidden. Yeah, definitely coming out of, of a... If you need to rewind it, because I just killed it too quickly. Definitely coming out of a... Uh, um, a pilgrim's body. Um, and although we're going to do this whole thing here, um, let's just take care of this while we're here. Um, uh, hmm. So as I said, if you can, take these guys out from above. Hopefully he'll follow me up here. <coughs> that is not up here, but he'll... Oops. Are you kidding me? How did I miss that a second time? I feel like it's a pre-scripted event. Well, I mean, it's obviously a pre-scripted event, but I mean... <coughs> Sorry for the coffee. Um, I feel like it's, you know, like in a way it's, it's hard to miss it. Like, that is mysterious to me. Like, I felt like I... It fell right through him. Like, I don't know how much more perfect that could be. No. 
Ugh, I mean, this is just because I don't want to fight him. Probably be quicker to fight him now. Okay, now that I can understand. Probably because I have to heal. Oh my. Oh my god. Just die. Herald Curve Greatsword. Uh. Giant gold decorated curve sword wielded by the warriors of the Herald Legion who sought the Dark Soul. The swords sank into the dark with the legion where their blades were severely corroded. All right. Well, I think we're going to call it there for now. We're going to clear out this swamp and then go fight the boss in the next episode. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.